Welcome back. We'll be looking at uh, the 2008 Mathematical Methods exam, exam 1. And uh, this time we'll be focusing on this particular question, question 4. These type of questions tend to scare students, particularly when they see a, a function like this and they ask to show something. And, we, and then we see the second part of the question. And if you have a look at the marks, 2 and 3 minutes, two and three marks, five marks. So we should be able to do this within about five or six minutes. So let's have a look at the first one. You notice the question says that this function here, k sine pi x, which is x is between zero and one, uh, otherwise it's zero, it is a probability density function. So what does that mean? Straight away you know that the area between zero and one for this function must be equal to 1. And so we're going to use that fact there to, to be able to arrive at our uh, show factor. So we're going to see how that works out. Now, say you did not know how to take the antiderivative of sine pi x. Well, good news. There it is. The VCAA, in their generosity, it's not really a lot, what they've given you is they've said to you that if you want to take the antiderivative of sine ax, it's equal to minus 1 over a, whatever that a is, cos ax plus c. Now this is the thing that we want to use now. And so we use this fact. And so this is, we can take out decay because it's a constant. So we want to find the antiderivative of that. And there it is, minus 1 on pi cos pi x 0, 1. So you would have got that from right there, as you can see there. So that's the one you would have got. All right, so return back. And now it's keeping up cool. We need to put 1 in a place of x. And so this becomes uh, cos pi. Don't forget the minus 1 on pi. Then take away and we'll put the 0 in a place of x. We've got this. Now this is where people would have had the difficulty. A student needs to know what cos pi and cos 0 is equal to. And from my notes, you can see cos 0 is equal to 1 and cos pi is equal to minus 1. If a student did not know that, the cos pi is equal to minus 1 and cos 0 is equal to 1, that's it. They wouldn't have been able to do this uh, question. And that's what these, uh, the examiners were testing out to see did a student know how to do that? Now the other trap was that there's a lot of negatives floating around. There's a negative here, there's a negative here, there's a negative here. So, and now you've just got another new negative, negative one. So this becomes minus one, minus one becomes one on pi, minus, and then notice the two negatives. What's that gonna end up? It's gonna end up as a positive. So there we have, we have k, two and pi. And now we need to know that it is a probability density function so this area must equal to 1. And there you go. K is equal to pi and 2. And that's what you need to know. So students would have got confused with the negatives. And students might not have known uh, these two vital little facts. And so we need to be able to commit to memory uh, quite a few things, particularly uh, to do with these uh, standard values, 0, 30 degrees, 45, 60, 90, 180 degrees. Uh, and there's a variety of ways. Uh, one of the ways I suggest is students uh, don't need to memorize all of them. Uh, they just need to memorize these two triangles, the 45 and 45, and uh, the 1630 triangle. But that might be another, another video another time. All right, so we've done the first part. Now they're asking us to find the probability x is less than or equal to 1 and 4, given x is less than or equal to 1 and half. So you have to recognize what this expression means. So let's go back to the uh, working out thing. All right, so when you have this, uh, as you probably remember, it's uh, a given means you have to remember that it's this and this over the second one. Now, why did we do, what have we done here? What did we do exactly there? Well, x is less than or equal to a quarter, and x is less than or equal to a half. Now, where's the overlapping region? Well, some students don't quite see that, 
I don't understand what we mean by overlapping regions. So one of the easiest ways to to show you that, and that's a previous exam question, so we'll just erase it there, is just to just have a look at that for a second, just very quickly. So we just put that there. We'll pick up a, a blue one. Just move it across there so you can just see what we're talking about. So one x is less than a quarter, and we also wanted x, pardon the terrible row, less than a half. And where do we get that expression from? That's right there. Can you see it? So that, it's really, it's like that. So what I normally do is I just normally draw a number line and we've got a half here or it's like two one four we've got a quarter here and now this one is saying all the values less than and equal to a half and this one is saying all the values less than a quarter so where they're both overlapping well, they're both overlapping in in this region here, aren't they? So now we know why I actually did that. So we'll turn back to this. So now we know that it's probability x less than or equal to a quarter over probability x less than or equal to half. Now, it's a little bit tricky. We're going to make life a little bit simple for ourselves. So we know that the equation is where k is pi on 2 sine pi on x. So what we want to work out is 0 to a quarter and then 0 to a half, which is this, 0 to a quarter pi 2 sine pi x dx over 0 to a half pi 2 sine pi x. Now that's quite tricky. So what I've done here is taken out the pi on 2, take another pi on 2, and see the pi and 2 cancels out. And so what I'm left with is 0 to a quarter sine pi x, 0 to a half sine pi x. Now we know what this is, and it's minus 1 on pi cos pi x over the same thing. But this one's 0 to a quarter, this is 0 to a half. And once again, we come back to those definitions, uh, the definitions that I was talking about before, and uh, you remember, all these definitions and and the student being aware of what these definitions are because these are the definitions now that are coming into play so let's get back to it so we put a quarter into it be very very careful take away the zero put the half into the place of the x there it is so it's pi and two and zero ah so there it is if you did not know what well, cos pi and 4 is, or cos 0, or cos pi and 2, or cos 0, you wouldn't be able to do it. Now, what was cos pi on 4? Remember? Looking back at uh, this, well, what do you see? I'll just minimize it so you can just see. Well, cos pi on 4, and there it is, cos pi on 4 is 1 on root 2. Whereas before cos 0, there it is, it's 1, and cos pi on 2 uh, is 0. So we need to know these things for, definitely to be able to do them. So I put them in, 1 under 2, 1, 0, and 1 there. Be very, very careful what's going to happen here. Well, this is minus 1 times that, so it becomes minus 1 pi on root 2 minus minus becomes a plus one on pi and this becomes zero and this becomes a negative and negative and you know what's going to happen negative negative one on pi where did students get confused well they would have got confused here if, again if they didn't forget to put the big brackets and, and not ignore that negative now we've got that that's basically it over pi and now what have i done now well i'm flipping this over i'm running this and i'm flipping this and this becomes pi and 1, and I'm multiplying across, multiplying across, 
And there it is. There's your answer. 1 minus 1 root 2. Now, I haven't left any steps here. I've, I've, there's many other ways you can possibly do these equations. But I've done all the work that you need to do. So what were the tricky parts of the question? Well, the tricky parts of the question in this particular part of the question was to recognize what we just said before uh, about uh, which region are, are we going to take into account, which in this case was, uh, as you can see here, x less than one quarter. And then once you've done that, is to not forget to use the value of k, which was pi and 2, and make life easy for yourself. Uh, take out pi and 2s and cancel out. And then you would have got this expression. You're very really familiar with taking the antiderivative of this, and you would have put it in. And so the next big hurdle was to surmount, uh, know some of the definitions, know what cos pi and 4 is, and cos 0 and cos pi and 2 is knowing that and then being able to simplify right down to the bottom step. Well, thank you for listening in and we look forward to another video soon.